Hi, I'm Connerly. And I'm Backley. And we are the founders of Cardboard Superheroes. Welcome to our 2020 Comic Con panel. In this video, we'll be talking about how we started Cardboard Superheroes and some of the lessons we learned. And then we'll go into detail about how we built Hulkbuster from the beginning to now. As we mentioned in our WonderCon video, we're super excited to reveal our completed Hulkbuster. Well, half completed. Okay, so unfortunately we weren't able to fully complete Hulkbuster as there are a lot of setbacks, but we also just launched our new Comic-Con Museum workshop. And we're going to tell you more about that later, but for now we're going to tell you about our origin story. One of the most common questions we get asked is how did we start Cardboard Superheroes? Well, it all started back in my toddler days. I grew up in my mom's work, which is filled with cardboard boxes. To pass the time, I would create forts and castles, and even my very first life-size cardboard robot at the age of six. Eventually, when my grandpa retired, he gave me all of his cardboard boxes. It was like Christmas came early. And here Why does he need this many? I'm stuck. All these cardboard. Using the cardboard boxes that my grandpa gave me, I made my second full-size cardboard robot, R2-D2. I didn't really know what I was doing and I was learning as I went along. Here is the original base. I built him because he was smaller and I also really love Star Wars as you can see from my shirt. The head was a more difficult piece to build because of all the curves and I also had to research online the best way to make it. Building R2-D2 inspired me to start creating more superheroes. When I was younger, Iron Man was my favorite superhero and I really wanted to build him. But since I was pretty new at building, I didn't realize the importance of creating an internal structure. I made each piece separately, starting with the chest. Unfortunately, because he was hollow and didn't have an internal structure, over time he has started to break down. Going from R2-D2 to Iron Man was a huge step up and I had a lot of difficulty and was very frustrated at times. But once he was all completed, I was really proud of how he turned out and couldn't wait to build my next superhero. The next model I created was Wonder Woman because the movie had just recently come out. Also, because my mom had a mannequin lying around that she wasn't using, I decided to use this as an internal structure. This actually gave me the idea of how important and helpful it was to have an internal frame. Another cool part about her was that I started to incorporate different materials besides just cardboard to make her a lasso, shoes, and wrist guard. Sometimes it was a bit awkward to build Wonder Woman, but eventually she turned out great. After growing up watching my brother build cool cardboard superheroes, I really wanted to get into building as well. So the first two things I started with were the Stormbreaker and the Hulk Hammer because they were smaller and simpler. My brother gave me a lot of tips when I was building them, which helped me a lot. When I was creating the handle for Stormbreaker, which is a twisted piece of wood, I ended up using crumpled up paper wrapped around a pipe so that it looked like wood, but it was also very strong. We eventually used this technique of using crumpled paper when my brother and I built Groot together. I had so much fun building Stormbreaker and Hulk Hammer. In the end, the best part was being able to bother my brother. Bower! Smash! Groot was the first project that my brother and I worked on together. We learned from our previous models and built an internal frame. Unfortunately, we didn't build it strong enough because over time, it started to break down and we've had to repair him several times. Groot was fun because it was so different from the other models. Because of his complicated wood texture, we ended up using crumpled up pieces of paper that we learned from building Stormbreaker's handle. We are cardboard superheroes. <laughs> Wally was my first full size model that I built on my own. I didn't need to create an internal structure because Wally isn't a very large model. It was a very fun model to build, but the challenging part was the wheel and the tread. Around this time, we were starting to test out a laser cutter and ended up using this to create the treads, which came out really well, and it is definitely my favorite part of Wally. After building Wally, I wanted to take on a more challenging project. Aquaman had recently come out, and I thought Black Manta would be a great model to build. Because of some of the problems we had with the strength of Iron Man and Groot, I realized that I needed to make Black Manta's interior structure very strong and sturdy, because I didn't want him to fall apart over time. Black Manta's head was so large and curved that it actually had to create its own internal structure. Because this model was very challenging compared to Wally, and took me almost 9 months to complete, 
I was able to improve my building skill so much, which allowed my brother and I to eventually take on the challenge of building Hulkbuster together. Because I had already made RTD2, I knew I had to build C3PO next. I started out by building a very strong internal structure, as we learned from the previous models. One really cool feature of C3PO was that I added real wires to the body. Another additional lesson I learned was that when I was transporting the models, it was very difficult to move full-scale models like Iron Man, Groot, and Black Manta. In order to make C-3PO easier to move without breaking, I made the arms removable and also came up with the ideas to use magnets so the arms could rotate. When I was finally finished with C-3PO, as you can tell, I was pretty happy. My family and I all watched The Mandalorian together and my brother and I knew we had to build Baby Yoda. We decided to go with the foam base because he has a lot of curves which makes him difficult to build. We ended up painting ping pong balls for his eyes. This is definitely one of our favorite models. And now, Baby Groot has a friend. Last year, we held our first big workshop at the Comic-Con Museum for the December Nights event, and it was a ton of fun. And we're so thankful for everyone at the museum who gave us this opportunity. We created cardboard templates using our laser cutter to make easy and fun kits so that people could build their own Thor hammer and Wonder Woman gear. We actually ran out of templates after having over 600 visitors make their own models. We'll definitely be prepared next time with more. We worked really hard for this event, and in the end, it was definitely worth it. We're hoping to hold another workshop at the Comic-Con Museum, where we'll be providing kits for Captain America's shield and Wonder Woman shields. Hope to see you all there. And that was the story of cardboard superheroes, and now we'll tell you more about our latest model. And now we're going to reveal to you how we actually built some of our models. We're going to show you how to build Hulkbuster because he's our largest and most difficult model and we've combined everything we've learned into him. So, let's head over to the workroom to see how it all starts. Welcome to our makerspace guys. We wanted to give you a little peek of where we built all of our models. Sorry it's a little bit messy in here, but we've just been just really working hard on Hulkbuster and it's also the one room that we can keep messy, so we take advantage of it. We wanted to give you guys a step-by-step -step process of how we go about building some of our models and we're going to use Hulkbuster as the example. So the first thing we do is print out a bunch of pictures and uh, this is so we know what each piece looks like. We're asked this question a lot about how we size and proportion all of our models correctly. So we do that by starting with an image of a model and then we basically take that measurement and then we find out how tall we want to make them and in this case Hulkbuster is 8 feet. We really wanted to make them taller, but unfortunately our ceiling's eight feet, so we couldn't go any higher than that. We then take those two measurements, we divide them to find a common ratio throughout everything, and that's how we get all of the correct sizes. And, you know, who knew math could be so helpful? The next step we do is build an internal frame, and we learned this from experience because our previous models like Iron Man doesn't, don't have an internal frame, and they're all falling apart right now. So, especially for Hulkbuster, we built one for him, and we made it extra sturdy so that uh, it would support his heavy weight. So last year at the Comic-Con Museum, we ran a workshop and uh, we had to transport all of our models there. So it was really important for us to make them portable. And we made him into like a transformer of sorts. His shoulders can come off, his arms can come off. Also his feet can come off and his body, it can be separated from his legs. And finally, his head can come off. We also made sure that Hulkbuster fits through a single door, otherwise he would have been stuck in our room. We're really happy with how Hulkbuster turned out, but as you mentioned before, we made a few mistakes and had some setbacks, but we're still learning as we go along. One of the setbacks we had was the hands. We actually miscalculated them, and they are a bit too small, so we'll show you right now. So yeah, they're little tiny hands. Yeah. And so now we're on the process. We're in the process of rebuilding them. Now we're going to tell you guys how we actually built Hulkbuster from the beginning, step by step. For Hulkbuster, we started out building an internal frame. We learned from past models such as Iron Man and Groot that a strong frame is essential, and especially for Hulkbuster, because he is so large and heavy. This was even more important. To make the frame strong, we rolled up pieces of cardboard to make sturdy poles and taped or glued them together. We used this to build a frame into the shape of Hulkbuster's body. As we mentioned, we made sure the frame could be taken apart so he is portable. Recently, we've actually had to go back and reinforce his frame because some of the cardboard poles and his arms actually started to bend. 
We used aluminum rods to do this. We also had to strengthen his legs so he would be stable and balanced when standing. I generally like to build the head first. This is just a preference, but after the head is done, I feel like the model is really starting because this is the most recognizable piece. Similar to Black Manta, I built an internal structure for Hulkbuster's head. This created the basic shape of the head and made it easier to add on the detailed curved pieces to finalize the head. Rather than permanently attaching the head to the body of the frame, we attached a post to the head so it could slide into the body and be removed. This was the stage we were at when we held a workshop at the Comic-Con Museum for the December Nights event. We are excited to bring the finalized Hulkbuster back to the museum later. The next part of Hulkbuster we worked on was the chest. Because the chest is so large with many curved pieces that fit together like a puzzle, it was a very difficult section to build. I had to plan out each piece ahead of time so it would all come together and also fit correctly onto the frame. Similar to C-3PO and Wonder Woman, I wanted to add in different materials to make the model a bit more unique. I decided to use some wire for the chest plate and the knees and, it, and I think it came out really well. For the arms, we already had the basic shape from the internal frame that we built. We made the frames for the arm able to attach and detach from the main body. From here, I then added the surrounding cover and detailed designs, including some armor and weapons. The most difficult part of the arms was making sure the size and dimensions fit with the main body. I actually had to redo this a few times to make sure he looked right, as we just couldn't have Hulkbuster with puny arms. Also, as we mentioned before, we have to redo the hands. When we started making the hands, we based the size on the wrist we had built, which we didn't realize until later was way too small. Later, when we attached the hands and the arms to the body, we realized that they were again way too small. As a famous saying goes, measure twice, cut once. Well, we definitely learned our lesson. Hulkbuster's legs were much harder to build than we originally thought, as there were so many pieces that had to fit together. The thighs, knees, shin, and feet. Also, because Hulkbuster comes apart, we had to make sure when we connected the body and leg pieces together, it had to look like one solid model versus separate pieces. The legs had a lot of detailed features, especially the feet and thighs, and we had to build them twice, once for each leg. As we were building the legs, we had to strengthen the internal leg frame and also enlarge the base of the feet so Hulkbuster would balance and not fall over. We had this issue with many of our other models, such as Gru, Iron Man, and Black Manta, we're happy to say Hulkbuster stands on his own without any outside support. This was the last major section of the model and it was really exciting as we got closer to finishing to be able to see him finally come together. We've been working really hard these last few weeks to try and finish Hulkbuster in time for Comic-Con. We're really happy that we were able to build most of him. Unfortunately, as we showed you before, we weren't able to finish his back. Also, we realized that we needed to rebuild his hands which are very detailed and take a lot of time. We'll be continuing to work on this and hopefully we'll be completely finished, front and back, when we come back to the Comic-Con Museum for our next event. We hope you enjoyed learning more about how we build our models and some of the lessons we learned along the way. If you want to get started building some of your own models, we just launched a free online workshop with the Comic-Con Museum, so you can go check it out. Uh, we'll teach you how to build Wally, Thor's Hammer, Captain America Shield, R2-D2, and more. Hey guys, so I'm going to be teaching you how to create your very own Wally. And I'm going to teach you how to make a Thor hammer. Because this week we're building the Star Trek Starship Enterprise. So for today's video, I'm going to be showing you how to build your very own miniature R2-D2. Thank you for watching and we're hoping to be back at the Comic Con Museum for an in-person workshop where we're going to teach you how to build a Wonder Woman shield, Captain America shield, and a Thor hammer. If you guys have any suggestions on our next build, go to our Instagram or our website. And see ya!